Uh, well, to kick us off, uh, John, uh, can you talk a little bit about where the concept for the show actually came from, how it all came about? Um, I was really, really interested in exploring um, extramarital affairs and like alternate affairs and doing it in a way that wasn't dark because everything I'd seen in movies and TV was like what I called Planet Fastbender. <laughs> Um, it was really dark and I was curious to see like what would it be like if it really happened in the real world in like on Main Street Portland like with my life and my family and in my world what would that be like and so I, I kept talking about it and talking about it and then I was reading about polyamory and that's what led to it Nice. And for the cast, I guess we can just kind of go down the line. Uh, what was your reaction when you first got the script for this or heard about the concept? Because obviously it is something that isn't really explored on uh, mainstream TV these days. If you want to start with you, Rach. Uh, well, I, I read the script sort of before I heard about the concept. John sent it to me. And I just love the world. I'm really interested in relationships, whether they're monogamous, polyamory, uh, because I think what drives them is sort of essentially the same. It's kind of a universal theme. And I just thought it was a, a really fun world to explore. Yeah, the title of the show was originally Foot Job. That, that, was, that was sent. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> That's what drew me to it. Uh, I'm a bit of an expert in that area. No. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, such a dick. I told you guys. <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, for, I mean, it's the same thing. For the first time, I mean, I had never really thought of the concept of a three-person relationship before I got the script. Or really? Are you serious? Well, I mean, yeah. Lies. Brief. Lies. No. Um, and then once you start thinking about it, you know, if there are three consenting adults and, and, and they want to go forward with such a relationship, why not? And I think that's where the show kind of, that's the theme of the show. Um, yeah. Can't this happen? Why can't this happen? You know, who says it can't happen? And I think with my character, especially, you know, throughout the scripts, he's, he's the one I think that's struggling the most. And so it was a dream for me to, to play a role like that. Yeah, what we've all talked about is the idea of like, what if your truth and your, your, your happiness looked nothing like you ever imagined? And what if it didn't fit into your um, immediate society? Would you have the balls to live it? And that's what we've all talked about as a team. Yeah, um, I mean, like Rachel and Greg said, uh, well, from my experience was a little bit different. Um, I got the first, John sent me the first three episodes and I couldn't put it down. I read it like it was 11 at night and I just couldn't put it down. And I just loved the idea of three people. It's the great thing about this show is it's not about sex. It's about connection and, and how sexuality is fluid. And I really like the idea of, you know, just a, a a regular girl who goes to grad school who's just kind of got caught up with these two people who she really feels for and avoiding actually being in a real relationship with Andy and I, I just I really like the complicated situation and um, yeah it was I, again it was r really exciting for me to explore something that I've never done in my life so what have you never done in your life can we clarify that uh, there's a lot of things I haven't done in my life um, yeah. no get out of here stop <laughs> sorry um, I, I think uh, not to sound like a broken record but what they all said that the uh, the script was just very real it was taking you know these regular people with uh, a situation that I guess you know I mean, I, I haven't I haven't really thought about a three person relationship that much myself, but um, you know, finding the light in the dark and sort of uh, you know taking a situation that could turn very dark and like John said, a lot of the time these situations are portrayed so dark in film, but finding the humor in it when uh, w when I got the script, I mean, I really couldn't put it down either, and I just couldn't stop laughing. Um, because he really funds the humor, I think, yeah, in the uh, in the situation. And these characters are just so rich and so full of life, and all of them have so much going on uh, under the surface. They're also complicated. So much more to do in season two. <laughs> so much more. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. Uh, well, uh, John, uh, the 
initial idea or kind of part of the inspiration, I think, was based on a Playboy article, uh, Sugar on Top, yes? I never read. You never read? No, I never actually read it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just kind of a concept that was... No, it was yeah. like um, sort of kismet, yeah. you know? I was very, very interested in exploring... Um, um, extramarital affairs and alternative relationships and the different ways people couple. Um, and they kept sending me this script, I mean this uh, article, and it had a you know kind of a slutty looking graphic and everything. And I kept not reading it. And, I, and so ultimately, I told the people I, you know who were asking me to come in. I said, I don't want to do that. I have my own ideas about what. I'd like to do with you know extramarital affairs and they said that's exactly what we want to do we didn't read the article either <laughs> <laughs> perfect so it worked out pretty well so that's how it went nice uh, well for the actors what kind of aspects of your characters do you find that you most relate to because they are all very relatable they have a lot of real world problems that kind of I think everyone can key into so what kind of stood out for you guys well I think th the nature of the relationship um is quite relatable and I think the idea of being in a situation where you're not, not that you're not necessarily living the life that you want to live, but certain aspects, you've lost certain aspects of yourself as your life becomes more streamlined. And it was it was really fun to explore with. I feel we had the best director I've ever gotten the chance to work with, Nisha Ganatra, who can't be here. And she just really enabled us to explore our characters in such depth and find the truth and play. And if you ever had any trouble with anything, she always gave you the best notes. And so for me, she helped me relate to Emma and to all the other characters, um, I think in a really easy and comprehensible way. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, the, the, um, what I tried to do was, it, it was maybe the most challenging part of the role is, is I wanted to make a character who uh, cheats on his wife, but it still is the most likable <laughs> character in the thing, which is a tough, tough, uh, or tall order. Um, but I think Jack, is the one who is the most um, preoccupied or concerned with what society thinks about this setup as the, as the season moves on, and so I think he has the most inner turmoil at all times um, and the most going on in his head. Um, and I, th I love that that aspect of it that it's not portrayed as just like every guy's fantasy, you know, that that, that he's bringing two women into his into his bedroom. Uh, he really struggles with it, and it's it's a classic like be careful what you wish for um, theme. I think as the season wears on, so. Yeah, it was a total dream role for me in, in many ways. Not because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be... Try, yeah, trying to be... Go ahead. Trying to be... Uh, yeah, trying to be charming. Izzy is um, somebody who is a hopeless romantic, and um, she's a yes person, and she is somebody who goes into something and, you know, deals with it later, and I definitely can relate to that. Um, that's kind of where I pulled from, you know, um, going into something without really, really thinking it through, just having these immense feelings for these two people and not really understanding where it comes from and just thinking, you know, I'll figure it out later. Um, and the cool thing for me is it, the, my relationships in the show don't just, you know, end with these guys. I had, uh, you know, my relationship with uh, Nina, Melanie on the show was really exciting for me because um, it was this, uh, this ultimate girl relationship where it's, you know, they're just there for each other. And you guys will see, like, as the, as the season progresses, like, we, we kind of get into our own things. And I, it just, it was really fun for me to explore. The, it's like the sisters. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was really great. And, you know, John gave us an amazing platform um, with the script uh, already. Just the, re the relationships were already there. And then, as Rachel was saying, Nisha... Um, really gave us the space and the time to find the characters. And we had two days of rehearsals uh, before we even started shooting where we just kind of got to do really, you know, dorky actor things and connect with each other and, like, you know, hold each other's faces, um, which was, which I know sounds... I wasn't there. Sound, yeah, John wasn't there. It sounds insane, but it was, it was so awesome because it really broke the ice um, going into something that was so intimate and heavy. So, yeah. 
Yeah, um, yeah. Nisha was. Uh, I, I, there, there really aren't words. Nisha was incredible. The the dorky actor things we did. I always thought of myself as someone who wouldn't, you know, go to rehearsal and like roll around on the floor and touch other actors' faces and all that stuff. But I'm, uh, what what she did in those rehearsals, we really learned so much about the relationships between our characters. Uh, more so for me than I ever have, you know, with any other kind of rehearsal. I mean, just looking at Priscilla, we we found our friendship, our sister, you know, our sisterly love together, which for me doing this show I think was the the funnest thing. I have a little sister, but I've never had, uh, you know, a, a sister on screen. And really that's what best friends are. They love each other. They hate each other. They, they can fight to the point of no return, but they're always going to be fine because they love each other so much. And the relationship that we have was so, it was just, I mean, this sounds so corny. It was so special though, because I, I feel like we really found something unbreakable between the two of us, no matter what. There's a lot that goes on in the 10 episodes. Um, and, you know, Izzy is like this beautiful disaster. And Nina, she, she well, <laughs> but she, she, she's complicated. And, you know, Nina is as well, but she keeps it together a lot of the time. And I think that um, the reason she, she can be so together is because she's a disaster. It's yeah, the reason that was allowed to develop is because we were given the space by both the network and the studio to write it like a book. So when you write something like a book, you get to go backwards, right? And you get to really develop the whole thing like like a book, as opposed to a room of people clicking out episodes. And when you do that, you develop something like this, which was unexpected for me as a writer. And I, I, I found this. I found this thing between these two girls. And they live together, and it's not just like she's her friend, she's her mirror, or whatever. It was meaningful. Very, very meaningful. Nice. Uh, it has a very naturalistic tone, which I think speaks to kind of the chemistry that you guys have all built anyway, but was there kind of room for improv as well as the scripts? Did you kind of play around a little bit? I yelled at them a lot, <laughs> as they all know. I didn't say a single word that was... Um, not, not a physically, I could beat him up. <laughs> I'm not allowed to touch the girls. Um, no, it's hard, because we, we cross-boarded the whole show, yeah. so we shot it like a five-hour film. So when someone says... Um, this doesn't feel right. I have to go, dee, 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 you know, like figure out like the next 10 episodes. Um, but what's amazing in the editing, I will tell you, um, to be humble, mostly fake, um, uh, some amazing, amazing stuff came out of improv. Amazing. All of them, all of these four here, amazing. They're uh, just the luck that we got from finding these four people and putting them together and letting them do their thing was worth it. I mean, it was hard sometimes to put it together. Like if, if, if you know, like an emotional tone changed when you shoot it for five hours, it was hard sometimes, but gosh, it was really, really worth it because they're so good. I think one of the things that I'm proudest of was the fact that as actors, uh, we all really cared about the show and the script and the concept. And I mean, that's probably my fondest memory of the shoot is just like all of us trying to figure out exactly how we were going to play the scene emotionally, because there's so much emotion behind every one of these scenes, especially as the relationship develops. And we really took our time, oftentimes in a tent, <laughs> prior, to, yeah. <laughs> prior to certain scenes, yeah, we'll um, where we just kind of figured out as a group, you know, how we were all feeling at that. And when you're cross-boarding like that, it's, it's difficult sometimes to know exactly where you, where you are in, in terms of the relationship. And, and, and uh, so that's my fondest memory. I, I also think in terms of the improv, we really fortunate that we could read the 10 episodes in advance because you don't always have that luxury so it was easier for us to track where the story was going and I'm sure it didn't entirely make sense some of our improv but so that we knew you know we knew 
what you were thinking, yeah. where it was going, so we could try and keep that in mind. Yeah, it doesn't hurt that we have two writers, by the way, <laughs> who are really, really talented writers. I, I, mean, I definitely got yelled at a lot, though. I don't want to sugar. Well, I yelled at him because I felt more comfortable <laughs> yelling at him. <laughs> we got more of like the, so hey. I yelled at um, you a little bit. <laughs> so we actually need to at least do one uh, that's yeah. on script. Yeah, 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 for sure. You left out the F words. Yeah, <laughs> Bucky, 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 you know. <laughs> he was very kind. Well, uh, episode two ends on a very tantalizing note, kind of uh, leaving a lot that we kind of want to see, but we haven't actually gotten a sense yet of what this relationship will be kind of day to day. So what can you kind of preview for everyone about how this is going to evolve without giving too much away? Well, the whole idea of season one is if you follow Billy Murnett's idea of the classic romantic, romantic comedy was to take this um, unconventional construct and make it fit in a conventional romantic comedy flow. Yeah. So that's kind of how season one goes um, with some huge surprises <laughs> along the way. And season two is going to be crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Tell us more. Yeah. There's one more. Right, one more. You need her. You need her. You need her. Him. <laughs> her and yeah. him. Her and him. <laughs> well, I love that it's uh, it's kind of it's very intimate, but it's never gratuitous, which is so refreshing. Um, so, what were kind of the parameters that were set by the network, by the studio? What were you kind of given? We, re we really did not have a problem between me and the network or the studio, frankly, and they've been, I, I, I sound like a big kiss ass right now, but they've been so, so supportive. Um, I went into this thinking what would be fun is to have an audacious idea and treat it like a romantic comedy. That was the conceit, right? Um, so don't make it slutty. Don't make it overly sexual. What would it be like to take this idea and treat it like a great classic romantic comedy. So we've had really no problems, and DirecTV and E1, I, I really like them. <laughs> I think also you, with um, your original kind of point of view on it, and John had a very good self-awareness of this as well, and then Nisha kind of even heightened in terms of avoiding the male gaze, which is such a typical yeah. way to shoot, but it's really, really hard to avoid, even even as someone who likes to see something different from the male gaze, it's like, how else do you do that? So with John and Nisha, we had two people who were very good at looking at something and kind of showing something that would be traditionally shown in one way, and you're expecting to see in a kind of gratuitous way, and showing it in a still very sensual, very sexy, but non-gratuity gratuitous way and I think as actors too when you're in those scenes you can feel really really vulnerable and you know when you sign up to do a show about a threesome you don't always know how it's going to go but we just felt or I sp speaking for myself I felt very very safe in that way and that, that was never anything I had to worry about um, that it would be salacious or you know, gratuitous so it was nice yeah I, it's, a, it's a very fine line when you're doing a show like this and um I just really love how the story kind of, you know, you see, like, normally in these types of situations, it'd be like, yeah, two girls and a guy, but, like, Jack's like, what is happening right now, you know? And then, uh, you know, Emma is more comfortable with this, and it's just, it's, it was really exciting for me. Like, Rachel and I, Rachel's done... Um, some girl stuff before. This is my first time exploring oh my that. God. She has. I mean, oh, not no. in real life. <laughs> not in real life. Those kind of oh, movies. Yeah. <laughs> the bottom of it. How many, by the way? <laughs> yes. In my other film that you can see on. Yes. <laughs> yes. What film was that? Girl on girl stuff. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I just wanted to add to what you were saying. Sorry. Um, that it. Um, the line. The line was was we rode that oh my god now everything I'm going to say yeah, is going to sound sexual dirty. I was about to say ride that ride line, the line. <laughs> I'm going to so Greg was really sensitive about this whole thing you guys uh, about the funny. sexuality because he felt like he might be exploited and he was uncomfortable you know <laughs> yes I'm, I'm, that would be I'm totally bullshit I mean I also <laughs> often get roles just on the basis of my sex appeal so I had to make sure <laughs> that this one <laughs> was legit now but when we talk about the, the relationship what, what can we expect from the, the relationship between the 
the three of them. I think it, it's surprising. I think that's that's the, you know a great word. Good word to use. Yes. That's what I hope. I think viewers will be surprised at how it develops and how it turns out. Nice. Uh, well, I think we're going to start taking audience questions. If anyone has any, uh, yes, sir. Hi, hi guys. Hi. Um, hey. I began a polyamorous relationship about a year and a half ago. Nice. And, uh, nice. My All right. journey was a bit different, but I okay. uh, definitely <laughs> saw uh, a lot of truth in what you showed, and it felt very grounded. Uh, just wondering, I guess beyond that Playboy article you mentioned, uh, what other resources or people you reached out to? Did you try polyamory yourselves? Like, <laughs> how did you get uh, into that space, or was it just your creative vision? Great what words. it would look like? I'm just kidding. I'm married, um, so my poly days are over. <laughs> um, but no, I, mean, I haven't. I didn't do much research Publicly. before, but since um, this, this sh I've been on this show, I've literally heard from, from everyone who's been in, in, in yeah. a polyamorous relationship or threesomes in, in general. Everybody wants to tell me. No, that it's, it's it's sort of like driving a certain kind of car or, or buying a car you never noticed before, <laughs> and all of a sudden you buy that car and you realize like that car is all over the road. Yeah. And when you get into talking about polyamory you raise that subject and you start talking to people and you're amazed how many people have delved and it's it was so topical and the fact that this came to me at the right exactly the right time yeah that definitely I'm, I'm amazed and many of these people on this panel included have all got it on with three people uh, and <laughs> that <laughs> no? four out of five of us four out of five you guess which four <laughs> <laughs> you guess which four. No, actually, there were other actors who aren't here who actually talked to me at length about their experiences with polyamory. But hopefully we did it right for, for people like yourself, and I think that's that's the goal, is, is to portray it in a way that, that is honest and, you know, maybe indicative and, and, uh, and reflects what these relationships actually look like. Yeah, you know, I think uh, you did a very good job. There was a reality show on Showtime a few years ago, uh, Married and Dating, and it was very sexualized. It was all, you know, mm -hmm. the, the threesomes and how, and yeah. you guys definitely portrayed the other side of it. The, yeah, the complications. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, that's very Appreciate nice. It. Yeah, the whole idea, thank you, by the thank way. You. The whole idea was... What if? Like, what if it happened to you? I'm talking to you, specifically. <laughs> um, what if it happened to any one of us, or Rachel, or any one of us? How would you react if you got in this situation? That was, that made a TV show for me. Not watching people who are so elevated in their um, lifestyle that they can do anything at every turn. Yes. Hi. Uh, hey. I'm curious about the choice to make Izzy an escort, especially because um, she's clearly not a very good escort <laughs> with the <laughs> sharing her name and getting drunk and <laughs> going to someone's house. Uh, that had a little to do with um, Jack's charm, let's be honest. That oh. wasn't just, uh, she doesn't just do that with everyone. Just yeah, of, of <laughs> course. No, you're right. She is a terrible she's, escort. She's <laughs> one in a million. <laughs> I can tell. Thank all. you. She would never do that except no. for him. Right. Yeah. Um, so especially with the advent of all these apps, someone yesterday told me about this new app called Thrinder, which is Grinder for three sons. Uh, um, and so, you know, why why escorts? Why didn't they, you know, try the latest app since they're in Portland? So I'm just curious to hear about that. John. <laughs> um, me. Um. <laughs> I, I was very interested in the idea, well, yeah, obviously all the online things are interesting, but I was interested in the, in the post-HIV world of prostitution, which is um, um, escorts of all kinds, um, dominatrixes, um, you know, all kinds of fetishes, all kinds of, like, the girlfriend experience. The idea of her being still relatable um, and being a real person and not being a hooker. And the idea was I think I needed to make my story work an X factor. Um, somebody had to be a little slightly less than normal. I mean, I love the idea that all three characters play as normal. That's the point, right? Um, but one of them had to be crossing the line just a little bit. And she crossed it just a little bit. But you're a little ahead of me. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah. And I was just going to tell you, um, 
part of the reason why I loved this, you know, why I was really excited to play Izzy is because the way John wrote her, I mean, in my real life, I can barely get through a door without running into the side of it. So um, just being this kind of like not really knowing what she's doing type of situation, like that beginning scene where she's like, crawl, like it is so awkward. And I, I love that about her. It makes her more relatable. I mean, it, to me anyway. I'll be honest, I can't stop thinking about Thrinder. <laughs> is, this a, is this a real thing? <laughs> so is that yeah, Thrinder.com? Okay. I haven't downloaded it yet. Okay. I you don't know it? where exactly it's available. It's an app. Okay. It's, an app. it's an app. Yeah, someone told me about it yesterday. Thrinder? Yeah. I, I am not an expert, so anyone else who wants to well, find it. Well, you brought it up, so... Someone downloaded it. 3 and There's the Wi-Fi's to download it. Yes. He's got it. I'll, I'll report back. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I'm in Austin, so, you know. Oh, it's, I'm sure it's here then. Please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is part of a season two, three, whatever. Yeah. Clearly. Um, well, in terms of that... Uh, What's the kind of end game? How far do you see this going? Um, the great thing about the way the story is structured is, well, I wrote it, so that sounded really weird, um, is that every season takes place over like a week. If you look at the first season, the whole season takes place over a week. And so does the second season. It just happens to take place three months later. Um, so the whole life of the series, if it lives five, seven years, is a year. Which um, means we have to stay in the exact same shape for the next seven years. That's all I'm that's all We're I'm mostly hearing. worried about polars, <laughs> that's all physical deterioration. Really. Please let me get fat. Low-cal beer. Yeah, he <laughs> oh, said man. he was going to drink a lot. Seven so. years. <laughs> Sorry. I to interrupt. <laughs> that's all I heard. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, uh, sadly, guys, that's all we have time for. So uh, thank you all so much for coming out. And be sure to uh, watch You, Me, Her when it premieres Tuesday, March 22nd yeah, at 9 p.m. Thank you. On AT&T's Audience Network, Direct TV Channel 239, U-verse Channel 1014. And give a round of applause to this amazing cast. Thanks, Thank, thank you. you.